how you doing? How you doing? Sorry, I'm showing my legs again. Another fairly nice day in London town. Right, um, hope you're okay, all okay, having a nice day. Um, today I'm going to be doing Super Soaker Kings of Leon. Um, this is just out and it's a really uh, nice track to, uh, to get you guys up and running on. Fairly easy. There's a couple of little bar called things, but I'll try and make it as easy as possible for you guys to pick up on. Um, lots of lovely comments on, on my previous videos. Thank you so much guys. Really, really appreciate it. Please subscribe because it means so much to me that you guys are actually you know, watching and stuff and uh, I'm always available here if you want to have a Skype lesson and go into things in a bit more detail. You can have a look underneath for the details there. Okay, so straight into it. Um, right, now, um, thumb. Today's lesson is thumb, okay? You can play this song without your thumb. But um, if you like the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and I think also Kings of Leon, and if you like Jimi Hendrix, and maybe even, let me see, um, Stevie Ray Vaughan, maybe people like this, um, you know, thumb is a big part. You know, when you're playing bar chords, guys, you know, you've got, um, you've got this position happening, uh, which is very fr uh, sort of frontal position. And it, it means that you're kind of restricted in, in the, uh, playing anything freely on top of the, uh, of the chord. Now this particular chord that we're, we're going to start with, I'll just play you the intro. Uh, well actually, it, it's the whole song really. Now what I'm doing here is I'm actually playing an A bar chord, okay? But I'm using my thumb to cover off the A. Now, the funny thing is, ironically, we've got a bit of a choice here because you could just play an F shape. What I mean by F shape is um, first finger holding down uh, the five, fifth fret on the E and the B, second finger on the sixth fret on the G, third finger on the D string on the seventh fret. Now you've got your open A covering that, but because we're going to be moving this shape, to play the D add 9, that's the little finger that we add and take off on the 7th fret on the B guys, hopefully you can see that, then we go up to the 10th the fret to play the D add 9, now we need the thumb, I'm suitably out of tune, I haven't even tuned up today guys. But you know what, Kings of Leon, they're sort of, they always sound a little bit out of tune to me, I'm really sorry. <laughs> they sound like they've just turned up at the gig and sort of like, you know, done a quick thing. Anyway, so, we've got our thumb over the top, we're playing an F shape, and we're putting our little finger down on the 7th fret on the B string to give us the add 9 flavour. The strumming is, down, 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 with the finger, little finger on, and then up stroke, twice without it, then you do a down up with it on, and then a down up with it off, so, do the same thing up here, sorry that was, now if you're wondering about the sound I'm using my trusty telly, um, trusty telly with my bare knuckle pickups in, great sound, and through my Fender Super Champ, I've got a Marshall Governor distortion, just breaking up the sound a little bit, so if I were to back the volume off, it goes nice and clean, but when you turn it on, beautiful sound, I could do any gig with that sound basically. Now, so basically the whole verse is the A and the D. Now for two strums coming up to the chorus, you've got a D flat minor. Now a D flat minor is you can play in two respects, but I'll give you the easy version, and also it's relevant because we need to use this version for the chorus, guys. So create an A minor shape, not using your first finger. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. I'm taking on board uh, comments from people that might not be as um, efficient with their chords now. Okay, so you create an A minor chord, guys, using your second, third, and fourth fingers, and you can use this 
to move up and down the neck. And wherever your first finger goes, on the A string, whatever note that is, you create a minor chord based on that note. So, for instance, we are on the fourth fret. I, I recommend that you do your, sort of, you put your hands like this and you clamp five strings down and then you make that minor shape. That's the D flat minor. So they play that twice. And then they go into the chorus, which is the A add nine. So again, the F shape on five. Gonna like this one. We go back to the D flat minor. But now we take our pinky off and we continue to play that little riff, the add nine thing that we had on the A. But we're now using it we're taking our finger off. This now creates not a D flat minor, but a D flat minor seven. And when we add this, this little finger on, temporarily, I'm going into a bit of detail here, but it, it creates a D flat seventh uh, sus four. Okay, it's that start chord at the beginning of Hard Day's Night, guys. It's been a hard, hard day's night. That one, but we're using it here. So you've got the D flat minor seven shape. So the chorus starts off on the A at nine. Then we go to the D flat minor seven. Then we go down, gonna make this easy for you guys, down to the second fret. We play that A minor shape again. B minor, then a nice E chord. Back to A again. D flat minor, B minor. Now, that whole thing is repeated twice over. The verse part, the A add 9, D add 9. Um, I'm going to put some chords in the description as well this time guys, I'm going to try and work a way of doing it, try and work a way of uh, putting it in there for you guys so that you've got the chords. Then the chorus, pre-chorus is the D flat minor on 4, then you've got the, for the chorus, the A add 9, and on for gain, then you've got the D flat minor 7, adding that note in, then you've got B minor, then the E. Now there's a little bit of a breakdown again which follows the chorus chords, it just breaks down after the second verse chorus, verse chorus, uh, and again they just play the sort of an A add 9, and then they do a D flat minor, and then a B minor, and then an E, and then they sort of take it away with... been asking me about strum patterns and I think um, I think you've got to really uh, my whole um, attitude about strum patterns and how I work them out is I listen to the track an awful lot and then um, you naturally sort of come up with the strum patterns because it's the only way that it will actually uh, sort of work um, but uh, if you can tap out you're following the bass line really, but also you're following the drums an awful lot. So guitar sometimes amalgamates lots of pieces, also bits of vocal we put in with the strum pattern, you know. So if you look at my hand, my right hand. just basically going up and down guys but what I'm allowing is for my hand over here to bump 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 squeeze when we hear those beats now if you combine that with the strum pattern If the strum pattern is going all the time, when, you're, when your fingers on your left hand, if you're right handed that is, you'll be playing with your left hand, when you raise them, you get a percussive sound, and when you press them, you get 
the chord sounding. So it's a combination of those two. But look, give me some comments on the video if it's a bit difficult and I might post up a follow on video. But anyway, look, I've got to go now. Um, lots of barbecues to go to today and um, lots of fun to be had. So until the next time, have a great day and uh, enjoy yourselves and I look forward to hearing your comments. Cheers guys. <laughs>